There we go. <laughs> yep. Seems to happen every uh, hour or so for me. I, uh, in the last couple streams I've done, I, I cut out at some point pretty consistently around the two or around the hour 15, hour 20 mark. Um, I've been modeling for a long time. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually. Um, uh, I've been working at uh, the Vancouver Film School for about. Uh, 10 years now teaching uh, started out as a teaching assistant um, well I was originally a graduate there but um, been uh, been teaching modeling there for about four years now uh, five years maybe five years now um, yeah so been doing that for a long time I've been uh, uh, Doing some industry work, although uh, I've I've learned most of what I what I do um, through through a lot of my students that move on into the not not I guess I shouldn't say learned but um, kind of doing a lot of that stuff through or kind of kind of keeping up to date based on techniques uh, that I that I've picked up over the years through through grads and and uh, through my own practice and study. <laughs> well, I uh, I hope I can I co hope I can bring some of that to the to my streaming. Uh, happy to answer questions and and uh, help students troubleshoot or help uh, any artists that are out there troubleshoot any uh, co any of their common issues and such. So. Mm. Auto save always catches me by surprise here. Let's uh, I gotta hide these pants for a second. There we go, that's better. Oh, three months? That's that's uh or, oh, sorry, a month's worth. Oh, that's pretty. That's still a pretty good start, right? You got to start somewhere. Are you, uh, uh, you know, uh, still in uh, university or high school? Yeah. Well, progress is uh, progress is the name of the game, right? You got to start somewhere. I've. Uh, you know, I, I've been doing this for a while now, but you know, when I started out, I was in the same boat, right? Nice game development is uh, is is the thing to be in these days, especially if you want to be like a, a modeling artist, right? I mean, there's certainly plenty of uh, other industries like uh, film and television work, but games is games is the best. Nice. Uh, what school? Well, that's that's fine. Uh, I know there's there's plenty of uh, some plenty of great schools out there, um, you know. And yeah, definitely the American schools are uh, the education is a, a pretty pretty different, but um, yeah. You know, no matter where you go, at the end of the day, if you if you put the effort in and you you know you really dedicate yourself to to learning learning it, you'll you'll pick it up no matter where you go. Really, and there's plenty of resources online that you can take advantage of as well. <clears throat> I personally find the the most important thing for me was kind of learning how to learn, right? You 
know, there's sort of a there's sort of a technique. Well, I guess not a technique, but there's sort of a, a process that you learn to go through. And a lot of troubleshooting is just a <laughs> kind of a process of learning in and of itself. But um, certainly, uh, working at a school for over ten years has given me a lot of opportunity to learn a lot along the way. You know, the, aside from the stuff that I've been teaching, and it's just a never-ending process. Oh, my ZBrush layout? Oh, jeez, good luck. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a mess. Um, I teach with uh, original ZBrush sort of layout, the default layout, because, of course, you know, when you're teaching stuff, you don't want to be too far away from what the, the students are working with, but because I, I kind of work more on my own personal stuff here and I want to kind of work faster, um, part of that for me is kind of customizing my interface here. So it's, it's a little scattered right now. Um, I might pare some of it down later, but um, I work with a Cintiq, 13-inch uh, Cintiq here, so it's nice to have a lot of buttons around the interface. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, I, I don't use this interface often enough. I'm just kind of starting to get used to it, so I'm still hunting around for where I put things a lot of the time. One of the nice things about ZBrush, though, is how easy it is to kind of customize, right? One of the... One of the best tips I was ever given um, was uh, to add my Enable Customize button to the interface. So you can kind of make the, the customization process a really organic thing, right? Um, for example, I just enable, hit the Enable Customize button and now I can kind of move all of this stuff around. And all you need to do is Control-Alt-Drag, right? So, you know, if you know where the button is in the interface, you, you can quickly kind of lay out the things that you're using a lot of and ditch the stuff that you're not and have something custom in no time. Um, so I'm kind of still evolving it. Uh, I may or may not take some time at some point to kind of review it, but I'm just getting used to it still. So hopefully, uh, yeah, I, I find, um, you know, having a custom interface is, is about efficiency and speed, right? In this industry especially, um, speed can be a huge asset, right? I'm not saying it's always necessary, you know, sometimes slow and steady wins the race, but, um, you know, being able to work quickly is is huge in an industry where responding to feedback is essential and being able to keep your work flexible and keep your your tool set flexible so that you can go back and redo things at a uh, as quickly as you can right that that uh, that can really help you uh, you know market yourself as an artist or, or sell yourself as an artist and of course you can you can learn faster that way too right and I can iterate and I can try more things it's an interesting error. That's the second time that error has popped up. I'm using share to broadcast and get a little nervous that that thing keeps popping up on me, but it hasn't seemed to kill the stream, so hopefully that'll stay the case. Hmm. I'm going to kind of start cutting some panels here and figure out what this is going to be. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, when ZBrush crashes, it's always a, a very sad, sad moment. Um, yeah, fortunately, I'm, I'm familiar with that error. Um, yeah, we're losing fiber mesh work, too. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> and I... Uh, I sympathize for you there. Um, do you have your autosave set to a... Uh, have you changed your autosave intervals at all or anything? Because that, that's one thing that I find can, can help a little bit, but, you know, depends on what it's set to. Actually, that's interesting. Grooming. Um, so have you, done, have you done a fair amount of hair? Yeah, yeah, you can get it to autosave every minute. You can also, um, I mean, the default, I think, is 10, which is not bad, I find. Like, I don't like the interruptions um, that come from having it save. But turning off the save history features um, is is really useful. Uh, the, uh, the... The history save really slows down the saving process, I find. So turning that off really speeds up that, that initial save and can make, make life a lot easier. 
Um, yeah, 20, 20 is a pretty bad default for that value. I can definitely, uh, can definitely agree. Um, one thing I find that, that helps is, um, you know, if you take a step back as well, uh, ZBrush auto saves if you haven't done anything with it after about a minute as well. So I find, you know, just even using, using that, that idea in mind, take a step back every, every so often and, and really look at your model and get a good auto save in there in the process or, uh, you know, whenever you take a break, right, really easy. Um, but of course, that's, that's kind of hard to do when you're in the middle of working. But um, it's interesting, you brought up the, uh, the hair problem. Um, I, find, I find a lot of people say that when they're working with hair. And uh, I have I have actually a, a few thoughts on that myself. Um, I was when I first started using ZBrush for hair, I wasn't quite sure how well it was going to work. And um, I don't know, are you using a lot of the basic brushes, like the um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can hear you on that. Sorry about the delay of, of course, uh, between Twitch here. It's probably a few seconds to maybe a good 10 seconds almost sometimes, but, um, yeah, I, yeah, when I step away for too long, it's, it's hard to, uh, I find it c can be a dif bit difficult to get back into it as well. But, um, sorry, uh, just, just to get back into the hair again, uh, I do have a few thoughts, perhaps something that might help you here. Um, let me jump up to the head and just do a little bit of a demo, if you don't mind. Um, the uh, the key that I find with hair is to not use the basic, to not use any of the brushes, really. Um, the, the brushes are, are feel almost like a misdirect to me. Uh, they're not they're not terrible at what they do by any means, but the concept behind them is is what I find is really the most important aspect of this. So uh, let me just quickly mask off and extract a little bit of geo here. Um, I'm just going to kind of throw a quick mask on here and maybe build a bit of a base geo. Um, whenever I'm doing hair, one of the things that I find, I, I, I'm going to kind of build it um, sort of with a production sort of centric approach in mind, but um, there's a few things that make hair really, really a little bit more of a, a little bit less of a headache. I'm not going to say it's going to be the easiest thing to do. I mean, to model anything, to, to really know it well enough, you really have to kind of understand the process that goes behind it, right? How is hair cut? How is it layered? How is it styled, right? That's going to really help in, in kind of finding a, a design. Um, but when it comes to actually getting the, the control over it, um, I do have a few thoughts that might be handy in this in the, if that's uh, if that's where you're struggling right so of course one of my biggest suggestions for doing hair and I'm not going to do it here because I'm uh, I, I don't have anything to, to really reference at the moment but that would be of course to get reference right um, having some really clear reference on uh, gives you a goal right it, it gives you some something to kind of aim for um, and and that can be uh, a really important part of of finding a, uh, knowing whether you've got the right results or not, basically, right? So I'm going to uh, extract off a, a hair cap here, um, and I'm going to uh, just Z remesh this quickly because what I want to do is get like a base that I can throw some poly groups on. Now I can do this on the base head, um, but you know if I was working in production and doing some hair, having a hair cap or a head cap would be really useful too. Now depending on the context, this may need to be like a proper um, proper topology and stuff. But I'm going to use Z remesher as a quick way to kind of get uh, something that's going to be decent enough here. So I'm going to set that uh, Z remesher resolution down to two here. Let's see if I can get this to come out clean. So that gave me something like this, right? Um, and this is probably not too bad, but uh, you know, the, the little corners and stuff here are going to be a bit weird. So I'm just going to hit the Z remesh button again and see if I can kind of clean this up. Maybe uh, bring the resolution down a little bit lower. Try 1.6. 
Yeah, that's a bit better, right? So that's pretty clean. That'll give me a good base. And I'm just going to start polygrouping this. Oh, I should do this with symmetry on. Yeah, that's a little better. I like that. Yeah. All right. Um, the head isn't the the head that I sculpted isn't actually symmetrical either. So uh, that poses a bit of a challenge sometimes. But I'm just going to quickly start masking off uh, sections of the hair. Now, um, some people do this really, really. Uh, specific to a style right so if you know if I'm dealing with a part in the hair I might mask out that top section in its entirety because um, I know I'm gonna have to have a part along one of these uh, one of these edges right or along one of these sections so I might even start with like sort of the top section and then I can isolate that down right I can control shift use that select rectangle tool and then I can break this into smaller polygroups as well and the reason that I want to do this is because the polygroups um, the polygroups are, are uh, a great they, they propagate into the fiber mesh so I can take advantage of the, the different sections in the styling process um, I actually used to do this manually uh, kind of building hair in pieces very small chunks um, but I found that that was a little bit tedious it's a lot of work to kind of go through and do it sorry um, just kind of going back through the chat uh, yeah retopo is definitely an important part of the process but it it it's something that can kind of come over time I think um, especially especially if you're you're interested in the the art side of it um, or if you really want to kind of get good at that side of it um, you know, being able to really understand form and proportions and anatomy, that stuff's going to be um, a lot, a lot harder to learn um, in a lot of ways than than figuring out sort of the process and the buttons, and and the process and the buttons change, right? That's the other thing to keep in mind. That stuff, that stuff changes from tool to tool and from program to program. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing different polygroups for the hair, um, just kind of breaking it up a little bit here. And the idea is by generating these sort of sections, uh, all of that will propagate out into the hair so I can control the style a little bit more. Yeah, anatomy is, uh, yeah, without a doubt, really a, an important one. Um, I'm still, still studying anatomy, right? Uh, Ryan Kingsland's definitely a great resource. He's... Uh, Kind of the king of anatomy and zbrush and uh, of course there's other traditional artists i'm sure out there that do some great stuff um i you know i i learned doing 2d as a as a you know as a when i was in high school um did a lot of drawing did a lot of art and and learned from books like the the burn hogarth drawing books and things like that and there's a lot of great drawing books out there that can really help with art, uh, artistic anatomy, anatomy for artists, uh, lots of little uh, anatomy books that are geared towards artists. Yeah, Ryan Kingsline. Um, it's K-I-N-G-S-L-I-E-N, -E um, so not I-N-G at the end. Um, yeah, he's, he's definitely uh, a solid solid uh, anatomy guy and he does I think he has his own website or his own like sort of online uh, school or sort of courses as well um, just he knows what he's doing he knows what he's talking about so um, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry this is I'm, I'm going through this at a slow pace here but uh, you can actually make these polygroups a little bit bigger at the back and again you know having a good style in mind to kind of cater this towards really helps as well so if I only had sort of a few directions that I needed to pull the hair in I might really do this a lot less um, and of course you can have bigger chunks uh, based on the amount of control that you need over a certain area and you can also go in and polygroup this stuff at, uh, uh, at a later stage sort of um, it's not as easy to polygroup individual fibers but it is possible um, I wouldn't want to do it primarily but it would definitely uh, save you a little bit of time earlier on if you wanted to skip some of that stuff and break it down later on so um, once you've got this all sort of polygrouped out right uh, generating the hair is just a process of masking so you're already probably familiar with this um, I'll just kind of actually you know what I don't even need the mask I can grow the hair directly from this so I'm going to use this as a, as a base let me hide this these other subtools so I can work with it relative to the head um, let's hide the G 
Geo hair and the hat. There we go. That'll work better. Oh, thank you. Um, hopefully this this is my Pandora station. Hopefully it uh, doesn't surprise me with some strange random stuff, but we'll see. Did I just do something weird to this? No. Okay, cool. Uh, clear the mask on that. That should help. Um, oops. So, so low mode. There we go. So... So, uh, yeah, you can mask the whole thing, but um, I'm actually just going to take the whole head cap because this is pretty much the whole area that I want to cover and just use that. So this is really where the interesting stuff happens, right? Um, the the initial setup is actually pretty straightforward. For most hair... Um, oh, wow, that's a high hairline. Uh, it'll have to do. Um, so mostly for hair, I, I concern myself with a few key sort of parameters here. Um, I do all of my hair for exporting to Maya at a later stage, so I don't concern myself as much with trying to accurately do hair for hair, but you could if you wanted to. And uh, I guess when doing that, the first thing that you're going to want to figure out is sort of the thickness and the amount of fibers. Um, I tend to use a slightly exaggerated sort of uh, coverage for the hair. This will give me a bit, just a bit more of a graphic look at it. Um, definitely increase the segments a good amount. Uh, again, going into Maya with something like this, I'd be converting it all over into curves. So um, having enough edges along those curves really allows you to style it. And the longer the hair, the more segments you're going to kind of want, right? So that's kind of the hairs along, the, or the edges that get dropped in along the grid that, that fiber mesh generates. Um, I'll keep the max fibers fairly high for this just because... I can for now, um, but you don't need to work with a lot of a lot of fibers. I'm going to drop the gravity down. Uh, this will help it kind of stand out. I'm going to restyle everything anyway, so I don't see much of a point in um, uh, working with a lot of gravity. And then the length. All right, so I'll get that out a fair length, decent length here. So now we're kind of ready to style it. Um, you can tweak other options like the by area feature as well. Um, this will kind of control density based on the size of the polygons. Uh, this one's can can make a difference depending on the base geo. The Z remeshed uh, piece that I had was pretty even so there wasn't a huge difference here but you can see if it's cranked up too high there's definitely a, a lot of variation in the length of the hair there and the size of it. So um, let's take that and accept it. Um, no, I don't want to worry about the fast preview mode. You can use fast preview, no problem with that, but uh, I don't really need it for um, for this. And you can always go back and grab the hair and turn it back on, right? So I can always turn that back on if I need to. Um, but since they're fairly thick, I'm going to leave the uh, fast preview off. So the next thing I'm going to do is use um, the smooth brush a little bit, right? So trimming the length of the hair down is just a process of smoothing, right? So um, you can kind of just smooth the length of the hair down to kind of cut it. Cut it. Um, if you want to speed this up, you can try using the clip tools. So uh, I've actually got the clip curve in my UI down here. Um, and I can, you know, you can kind of clip the hair a little bit with this tool. But you do have to be careful because uh, this is not properly trimming the hair, right? This is flattening the geo out. So once you clip it, um, you kind of have to go back in with a, uh, another tool to kind of clean up the, the shapes a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of trim this from a few angles like this, um, just to kind of shorten the, the hair over these angles here, and then sort of take a smooth brush to it a little bit. And uh, the thing to keep in mind about the way that the smooth brush works in this context, and I'll admit the clipping can be a bit dangerous, so... Uh, the reason that, I'm, that I say that is because it flattens those hairs down, right, if you're not super familiar with this. But what you can do once you've got that is take the, uh, the smooth brush, right, so if you hold the shift key down um, while, you're, while you're manipulating the brush menu, right, while you're manipulating settings in the brush menu, you can go in and uh, change settings specific for the brush, right? So what I want to do is take the smooth brush and go into this fiber mesh category. And the fiber mesh, um, oh yeah, yeah, the smooth brush just hold shift, right? That just totally smooths out those hairs a little bit. Um, 
all the brushes work uh, with with hair because it's just geometry, right? It's just geometry with this sort of subcategory that labels it a fiber mesh and applies a mask down the length of the hair. So um, from here, I can hold the shift key down and slide this preserve length slider up in the fiber mesh. This is in the brush menu, right? So if you don't see it on the right hand side like I do, right? You'll find it in that brush menu on the uh, on this side. So by activating the preserve length, and I actually think this might be uh, univ well, it looks like it's applying to my whatever brush I've got active right now. Um, probably the move brush. Oh, no, that looks like a... I don't even know what brush that is. Let's see. Uh, oh, it's the slide brush. I don't know how that came a became active. But um, if you turn that preserve length up, right, the hairs won't, um, won't shorten. Right? So it kind of relaxes them out, right? So it's a little bit different um, when you've got that preserved length on when, or versus when you don't. So you can see here it's actually um, it's kind of relaxing them by bending them inwards. Now I don't really want that. What I actually want is um, another feature. So I'm going to turn that preserved length down. What I want it to do is, is take the, the hairs and straighten them out from root to tip. So to do that, the other main thing that drives fiber mesh, right? We've got we've got this preserve length setting, but you've also got in the auto masking the f the uh, auto mask with fiber mesh feature, right? So this this is what masks the root and the tip of the fiber. So if I drag the 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 mask up and down, I'm basically saying the higher up this this line it is the or up the graph vertically, um, the the more masking I apply, and that's based on the length of the hair from the root to the tip, from left to right. So the root is fully masked, and the tip is fully unmasked by default. But if I bring that tip down a little and bring up the middle of the hair, right? And again, I can apply this to the sh to the smooth brush by holding Shift, right? So I'll just reset this and hold Shift, and adjust this on the smooth brush and that's going to let me smooth out the center of the hair without affecting the position of the end of the hair right and that's going to be really really good for controlling these shapes right so as i brush this down i can basically straighten the the hair lengths back out within that shape right and it's going to do some weird things sometimes but this is really going to make it a lot easier to style down the road right so Oh, looks like it's uh, ran into some sort of collision issue. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. That's a little confusing. Uh, oh, I've got the preserve length on. That's why. Yeah, I forgot to turn that off. All right, that's fixing it. Yeah. So hopefully that fixes all that up. Hopefully I didn't destroy the back of the head hair here. Um, obviously, uh, you know, if if I was doing this for real, I might even just uh, uh, try it over again after making a bit of a mistake like that. But I'm just going to press on. Um, so so that's kind of the core of how I how I start the cutting process, right? So trimming the hair down and kind of finding the different sections, but um, really dealing with the 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 styling process is a little bit different. So what I would do here is use the move brush, right? The move brush is really all you need, right? A lot of people overcomplicate it by looking at this brush palette and grabbing all of these different grooming brushes and trying to make them do the work for them. But really the move brush on its own, plus understanding how the masking and the fiber mesh sliders work, this can do everything you need, right? So for example, um, I need to generate the part down the side of the head here. I want to comb the top one way and comb the sides the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into um, uh, polyframe mode so I can see my polygroups. And I'm going to start isolating the polygroups along that hairline that I created earlier. So I want that one. And uh, I'm going to use a, a quick control. So, so control shift and tap on that isolates the group down. Dragging. Oh, and I've got my... The wrong brush here so I'm going to switch over to my select rectangle um, if you're not seeing that in your interface right you can hold control shift and go into your brush list here and while you're holding control shift you'll see uh, the select rectangle option there right um, and that's just it's just going to be a lot more convenient for grabbing poly groups so control shift drag right so holding the uh, the control shift I can tap on a poly group and then I can drag to invert that right and once I've inverted one, oops, so I got some uh, gestures going on here. Um, 
I should probably turn those off, actually. Let me just take a moment here. Sorry. Um, oh, you know what? I don't even know where they are. I'm going to move on. I'm sorry. Back and forth. So I'm going to just uh, isolate down the uh, pieces along this hair part, right? And if I hide the wrong thing, I can drag to reverse and then throw that back into the visible list, right? Or the hidden list. So that control shift drag lets me just kind of hide and unhide pieces, right? So I'm just kind of go along that little hairline that I created earlier, grab this whole top section. And this is obviously <laughs> a lot of work. So that, again, that polygrouping, oops, uh, you can kind of be more careful about how and what you decide to polygroup along the way, uh, make bigger polygroups or smaller, smaller polygroups. Uh, to make this a little easier, but missing a few of these, so it's treating it as a tap and unhiding everything. There we go. Um, I think I like that. That's good. Drag to reverse, and now I can take this and grab that move brush, right? So, uh, move brush, uh, get a nice big brush, and again, you know, if I don't want it to stretch the hair, right, the default for the move brush, and I got topological on, there we go. Um, so the default for the move brush is just going to be to sculpt and pull it, right? So this is going to stretch the fiber out. You may even like, um, for this sort of stuff, for styling and stretching the hair, a brush like the move elastic, right? The move elastic is actually really good for this as well because it's going to keep the edge spacing on the, uh, the grids of the hair more consistent, right? That's one of the great things about this sort of stuff. So if you're, if you're trying to add length to certain parts of the hair, in this case, maybe I want a long longer sort of uh, hair along the part so it can kind of fold over, wrap over the top, right? So do something like that and just kind of shape this a little bit. Kind of got to go through it bit by bit and make sure I'm grabbing everything here and rounding that out. Right? So something like that. And then I can go in and grab that move brush, right? I'll go back to that move brush. Uh, oh, I got the got my own little hotkeys here for this. So move brush. And then uh, turn that preserve length up. Right? And now I can kind of style this and just fold this right back over the head. Right? Now this is a rough, uh, a rough sort of initial style. I'll do this a little bit cleaner on a second pass, but this kind of gets the hair going in the right direction. Right? And you'll notice with this um, that the, uh, the edge of the inside of the hair here is running all, uh, it kind of bunches up. This is a collision issue. So uh, along with the, the preserved length in the fiber mesh, you've got this front collision tolerance and the front collision variations. If I drop these down a little, and I like to do like 20 and 10. I think it was 20 and 10, yeah, let's do 20 and 10. Um, and this will just kind of keep the, the hairs a little closer to the surface, or let them get closer to the surface, I should say, right? So I can kind of just do that and just kind of find the general direction. Yeah, they're, they're going to. They're going to go through the mesh. It's just kind of the way that this tool works. But um, once you start kind of getting into the, the styling process, you can control that a little bit better, right? So now I'm ready to kind of move into that stage, right? Just kind of pull all this around, right? Kind of find the shape. And then, you know, from the front or from the, the different angles, just start pulling it with that move brush out, right? And it'll really just start to kind of go the way you want it to go. And, you know, if you want to adjust your focal shift and get a little bit of a different shape to it, you can, right? Keeping that preserved length up is all all there is to it. Every brush will work this way, right? So if you want to use, I don't, I don't know why you might want to do it, but you could use the standard brush like this or whatever. Um, and then you can even break this down by polygroup, right? So I can grab, you know, one little section like this and just start tweaking this shape a lot, right? I can go in and make the brush a little smaller and pull the ends together a little bit. Well, let's use a larger brush. I'm just kind of pull these ends a little bit closer. Right. And just start stretching this out a little. Right. Maybe give it a little bit more front to back. Right. Just let that kind of flow in this way. And you know it's gonna it's gonna do this sort of floating thing, right? It's gonna you're you're gonna have to kind of anticipate this or or get used to going back and tweaking it afterwards, right? But uh, you know if you run into an issue where it's where it's not colliding, just pull it back to the surface, and it'll just kind of start to sit on that surface a little, and then you can go back in and just start kind of add in a little bit of volume with a nice small. I like to use a brush with sort of a low 
fo or high focal shift, right? Nice big draw size and just shape that around a little bit. And if you want, you could even grab a brush like the uh, Move Topological. Right? And this, I don't do this as often with the Move Topological, but same idea. Throw that preserve length up, and I can start pulling a few individual hairs around as well. Now, you know, if I'm going into Maya with this, I might not want to do each individual hair because I'm going to have to convert that all into curves at some point. And I might do this on a separate um, hair piece at least, right? So I might separate this out. But if I'm staying inside a ZBrush, you can just kind of start using that move topological brush to kind of add this sort of subtle variation to individual hairs. And as long as you keep your, your move brush big enough, um, you can even go back in and uh, keep that up. Um, you can even go back in and, and pull the whole shape back around if you need to adjust it again, right? So I might kind of bunch a few hairs up here and bunch a few hairs up here and just try and try and kind of clump things a little bit sometimes, right? And then move on to the next section, right? <laughs> and as you can imagine, this is going to be a, a time-consuming process to go through, but uh, that's that's kind of the hair process in a nutshell for me anyway. I, I find that this technique. Um, you know, of course, you can you can simplify the hair down. You can stylize it a little bit more with things like uh, uh, increasing the coverage on the hair when you generate it, so it's thicker looking, or you know, even just using less coverage and 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 focusing on the styling, right? But um, you know, you you, I find a lot of people just get so so caught up in those default tools, right? Yeah, no, I'm I, I'm I hope this helped. I hope that uh, this was gave you a little bit of insight into a, a different way to approach hair. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think that's one of the great things about ZBrush, but, uh, you know, if, if this helped a little bit, gave you a few few new ways to play with it, then uh, all the better, I guess, right? So that's, uh, this is a little bit messy here. Oh, um, just a little, uh, an additional note. Um, if you're if you're trying to nudge things around as well with the, with the polygroups, uh, that auto-masking can can be useful in a, in more ways than one, right? So, you've got the uh, the auto mask fiber mesh, um, which has sort of a curve associated with it uh, that you can go back in and fine tune for masking different parts, right? So, not only can you do that with the root, but you can kind of change the way that the tip moves, or or even focus on nudging the tip of the hair around if I want to kind of flare it one way or another just at the end, right? Um, the other thing that I would consider is the mask by polygroups feature, right? So with the mask by polygroups on, I can move a single polygroup around. Now, uh, one of the things that I'm doing here, and if you've only used, uh, say, the latest version of ZBrush 4R7, um, you may not really know that this, this dynamic mode of your draw size can be changed. Now, uh, all you need to do is find the draw size slider and just hold shift and turn that dynamic mode off. And this will let you get really big brushes, right? So I can get this brush really big and just move the whole section around, this whole polygroup around. I don't know how easy that is to see at this distance, but um, maybe I can even turn the polyframe off here. And as I move this, let's get a better color going here, a little brighter. Right, it's only moving that one polygroup around. So if I'm trying to move one section out of the way of another, this can really be useful. And of course, pairing that with a nice big brush yeah, makes it makes it a little easier, right? So I can kind of tweak that hairstyle around a little, shrink the draw size down, and then start nudging that that adjacent piece around into the next spot that I want it to be in. Now the problem with keeping it all visible is going to be the the masking, um, the the well, I guess not the masking, but the the collision detection. So if you do run into a lot of collision issues, don't forget you can turn that front collision and and uh, the tolerance and everything off completely. Um, you do run a little bit of a risk of it self colliding with the hair, the other hairs sometimes, so I just wanted to mention that as well. So yeah, I hope that hope that helped a little bit and uh, gave, you a, gave you a few ideas on how to solve some of those hair issues and uh, yeah, happy ZBrushing. <laughs>
Hey, I'm, uh, I'm glad I could help. Uh, I don't have too much of a regular schedule at the moment, but I'm hoping to kind of get get one uh, as time goes on. So far, Fridays and Wednesdays have been the most consistent for me, so if you're, uh, if you ever feel like dropping in again, by all means, uh, let me know. Or, I guess not let me know, but, you know, pop by. You know, hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll be online more and more often. Uh, cheers. Have a good evening. And for the rest of you uh, out there in the archives, if you're uh, watching this on YouTube or watch, cheers, Bertie. Have a good one. Um, yeah, if you're uh, if you're checking out the archives on the YouTube channel uh, and you happen to stumble across this one, I'm going to be wrapping up here as well. Um, thanks so much for joining me. I hope the uh, the random bouncing back and forth between uh, uh, hair and uh, boots doesn't uh, throw you off too much. Uh, I will be reapproaching those boots again when I get the chance, but uh, maybe you got something out of this hair hair process as well. So thanks so much. Have a great evening, and uh, I'll see you all later. Cheers.